keeping up with our motto that learning be a joy and teaching a pleasure. Here we are with the remote teaching and learning process to bridge the gap. Happy learning students! Welcome back students. Today we are going to continue with chapter 2, The Living World. In the previous session, we have covered the four characteristics of living things. Growth, food is necessary for growth, respiration and excretion. Today, we are going to cover the following characteristics. Responsiveness to stimuli and movement, reproduction, a definite lifespan, and a cellular structure. So, let us start with responsiveness to stimuli and movement. Now, before explaining these characteristics, I want you to understand what is stimuli. An event that occurs in our surrounding is called a stimulus and stimuli is the plural of stimulus. So an event that occurs in our surrounding as shown in the picture the event that is taking place is a person is touching the hot stub. So, in this case, the stimulus is touching the hot stuff. And what is the response of that person? Obviously, he is getting burned. So, this is the response of that person to the stimulus. The movement or the change taking place in a living thing at such a time is their response to a stimulus. Let me give you one more example. Suppose you all are sitting in the classroom. Suddenly, principal ma'am enters the classroom. So, the entrance of principal ma'am is stimulus in this case. And when the principal ma'am enters the classroom, what will be your response? You will stand and greet the ma'am. Right? So, that is your response to the stimulus. Living things act in various ways when responding to a stimulus. Plants too show movement in response to a stimulus. Let us understand this. As shown in the picture 1, a potted plant faces towards sunlight and grows. In this case, can you tell me what is the stimulus? The sunlight is falling. The presence of sunlight is stimulus. And what is the response? The plant faces towards the sunlight and grows. That is the response of the plant. Now, as shown in the picture 2, a sensitive plant folds up the leaves on touching it. So, here the stimulus is touching the plant. And the response of that plant is the plant fold up the leaves when somebody touches it. So this is the response of the plant. Next characteristic is reproduction. The process by which a living thing generates a new living thing like itself is called reproduction or procreation. You can see in this picture, various living organisms, they generate the new living thing like themselves. Cats produce kittens, 
dogs produce puppies cows produce calf and humans produce babies so this is called reproduction means to reproduce the same kind of thing some animals give birth to their young ones for example cow dog lion tiger etc some lays eggs their young ones hatch out of the egg as shown in the picture one hen lays eggs and then hatch it and a chick comes out of it new plants are produced from the seeds stem or leaves of the plant as shown in the picture two hibiscus plant reproduce with the help of stem is shown next characteristic is a definite life span the living things grow into adults remain alive for a certain time and finally die the time period for which a living thing remains alive is called its life span so all the living things have a definite life span after which they die the life span of different plants and animals are different picture shows few plants and animals with their approximate life span for example elephant 60 to 70 years tortoise 80 to 120 years the life span of butterfly is 8 to 12 months life span of a crow is around 10 to 22 years life span of a crocodile is around 70 to 100 years you can see the life span of trees it is 100 to 200 years life span of a fly is only around approximately 28 days the last characteristic is a cellular structure observe the picture alongside very carefully the wall has bricks to construct a wall we firmly join the bricks together similarly living things are made up of small units called cells picture shows the onion cells when onion is peeled and looked under microscope we will be able to see this kind of structure all actions and processes in the bodies of the living things are brought about with the help of cells cells are the smallest and structural unit functional unit of living things to understand cell more clearly let us see the organization the order of organization in human beings we will go in the reverse direction first you can see a human being the body of a human being is made up of various systems digestive system respiratory system nervous system etc here one example is shown digestive system right so this is the digestive system of the human being this digestive system is made up of several organs so it is called organ system now this system it is made up of several organs right so next is the organ so organ system is made up of several organ here this organ is stomach right one of the organ is stomach next every organ is made up of tissues and tissues are further made up of cells so we can say that cells combine together and forms tissues 
tissues combine together and form organ organ combine together and form organ system and all the different organ system in our body combines together and forms the human body living things made up of single cells are called unicellular organisms for example amoeba paramecium etc picture shows amoeba and paramecium the structure of amoeba and paramecium looks like this when seen under the microscope living things made up of more than one cells are called multicellular organisms for example man flower cow banyan tree shark cockroach etc now let us see the usefulness and harmfulness of different plants and animals we will start with the useful plants plants like tulsi neem wasaka hirda etc are used as medicine there are many plants which provide us with fruits and vegetables like mango apple banana potato okra etc there are plants from which we obtain rubber which is used in the manufacturing of tires tube raincoats belts sports coat etc flowers like rose jasmine lavender champa saffron etc are used for extracting sweet smelling oils called perfumes all plants are not useful some of them are harmful also leaves of colocasia and pods of nettle cause itching datura is an example of poisonous plant uncontrolled growth of fungi and algae in water pollutes drinking water and may cause diseases now let us see the useful animals how animals are useful to us from milk and flesh yielding animals we obtain food products they include cattle goat poultry pig sheep etc many animals that can lift heavy loads are used for transportation plowing of fields and other agricultural activities fiber and skin of animals like sheep goat cattle camel etc is used for making several products like thread woolen clothes purses belts etc like plants even few animals are harmful to us mosquitoes and flies they spread disease cockroaches mice rat destroy the stored grains the bites of some poisonous lizards spiders snakes and scorpions can even cause death animals like tigers lions etc can enter human settlement and may kill domestic animals and people this is all about chapter 2 in the next class we will start with chapter 3 diversity in living things and their classification thank you so much students